This program starts now. Hello, everyone. This is Sashi Kant, and welcome to the 15th edition of Hyderabad Runners' weekly webinar series, Beyond the Track. Hyderabad Runners, founded in May 2007, is the first group in India to institutionalize running with a mission to promote running as the preferred form of exercise among people. Hyderabad Runners has been doing this through many of its local running groups and mentors all over the city. It has also been supporting running groups outside Hyderabad too. As part of our initiative to keep you constantly aware and educated in these uncertain and turbulent times of the COVID-19, we bring you Beyond the Track, a live webinar series of conversations with some of the highly distinguished experts from running and related sports to help you all equip yourself with both knowledge as well as practical training. In this 15th edition of Beyond the Track, we are honored to connect you to Dr. Kaustub Ratka, one of the top triathlete coaches in India to talk to us about the adventure of a 25 times Ironman finisher from Pune to Kona. Without further ado, I'd like to invite Neelima Gudaru, one of the active members of our Hyderabad runners to introduce and welcome our guest for today. Over to you, Neelima. Thank you, Sashika. Hello, everyone, and a very warm welcome to you on your favorite show, Beyond the Track. Today's guest needs no introduction. He's fast, he's furious, and he's handsome. No, I'm not talking about James Bond. He's our own homegrown Iron Man, Kaustubradkar. Born and brought up in Pune, he has been into competitive sports since age eight. Swimming since his early days, he set quite a few national records, some of which took decade and more to break. When he moves through water, he glides through it seamlessly, like a fish cuts through the water, magic in motion. He went on to swim competitively in the US, where he also did his master's and PhD in human physiology. He practiced at John Hopkins Hospital as a rehabilitation expert for half a decade before coming back home to Pune to set up his own business. It's called uh, Rat Strong Coaching, premium coaching for Ironman, triathlons, running, and overall health. All the while, he was competing in Ironman events. And to date, he has completed 25 Ironman races. He is routinely among the first swimmers out of the water, which is very unusual for Indian. He is the first Asian to complete Ironman races on six continents. He was the first Indian to qualify and complete the Ironman World Championship Kona, Hawaii in 2017. First Ironman certified coach in India and a lot more. And for those who do not know what an Ironman race is, it's a fairly simple race uh, where you swim 3.8 kilometers, cycle 180.2 kilometers, and run a full marathon, 42.2, all in 15 to 17 hours, depends, depending on where you're racing. So friends, today we have Dr. Kaustu Bradkar, talking about his journey through various phases of his sporting life, sharing with us his insights into the world of competitive swimming and Ironman triathlons, also his vision and dreams for the Indian triathlon ecosystem. Welcome, Dr. Kaustup, over to you. All right, uh, thank you very much for such a warm welcome. Um, for those people who do not know, uh, after I moved back uh, to India in 2013, the first marathon, the first full marathon I ran was the Hyderabad one. And I have some uh, very interesting stories about that race. But uh, uh, today I'm gonna to talk to you um, more about my swimming and Ironman journey. So uh, without further ado, uh, yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, let's get going. So my uh, technical issues. So uh, I grew up in Pune um, in a very, very traditional Marathi household. Uh, my sister and me, uh, my father encouraged us to go swimming. And this was the pool uh, we used to go swim at. It was called Tilak Tank. It was one of the uh, biggest pools in Asia at that time. It used to be 100 yards one way. And this green pool is where I had all of my swimming career done. Believe it or not, um, this pool 
produced a whole lot of Indian national champions. Uh, when I started swimming uh, at the age of eight, it was more to acquire a life-saving skill. Uh, my first three or four years, uh, I was not good at all. Um, I had a lot of learnings in that young age that everyone around me was winning medals. But unfortunately, um, I was finishing fifth, sixth, and eighth. In 1994, uh, something changed, and something changed uh, for, the, for the good. That um, I realized um, the only way ahead was via hard work. Uh, in 1995, I'll never forget, was the first time I became Indian national champion. Um, I'll never forget the date because it was on my birthday, the 5th of May. And then once you get a taste um, of a national medal, uh, you don't really want to let go. And from 1995 to 2001, um, I was Indian national champion, um, at least in one event. I had multiple records at national level, uh, one that got broken after 15 long years. Uh, this is one of my one of my oldest pictures um, in the sport. Uh, this is me uh, in the middle here, uh, if, you can't, if you can't recall. Um, this is in Pune uh, during uh, one of our many state level meets. Uh, when I was swimming, we only had the opportunity to do two events. So it was as a junior, we swam the junior nationals and subsequently you scram the school nationals. And once you turned 18, got into uh, junior college, uh, you swam at the senior level, and then you did uh, All India University. Swimming back then and now, um, there is a lot of politics that happens. Unfortunately, um, politics played a vital role in my life as well. It played it in different ways that the powerhouses uh, of swimming were Bangalore, Delhi, and somewhat Mumbai. If you did not belong to these three big metros, um, there was a lot of partiality that happened. Um, it happened in multiple ways. For example, in 2000, I was Indian national uh, record holder in the 50 meter freestyle. But when it came time to select the team, uh, my name was dropped. I was second in the 100 meters freestyle, but I did not get to swim in the relay. So, uh, these were probably my last pictures swimming in India. On the left is at the All India Inter University swim meet in Trivandrum, uh, where I set the record for winning a gold medal in all the freestyle events. So the 50, the 100, the 200, uh, the 400 and the 1500 freestyle. And on the right is my last national gold medal, which was 2000 in Bareilly. Um, and I'm flanked by two of my, two of my real good friends and uh, they have been an inspiration to me as well. In 2000, um, I was left out uh, from the Indian team and my parents and me, we came to a collective decision that it was time to, time to move on and take the sport somewhere else. And that's when I applied to uh, American University and to my, to my fortune or to my luck, uh, the swimming coach liked what I was doing and decided to bring me on board. So again, uh, this is me in roughly 2003, uh, at, in December 2003, as we traveled to West Palm Beach uh, each year for, for a swim uh, camp. Life in the US was completely different than what it was in India. Um, first of all, the training was completely different. We used to spend uh, four hours each day swimming. So, our swimming sessions started um, early morning at 5.30 in the morning that went on until eight. And then again, in the afternoon, you had a choice of session between 1.30 and three or a session uh, between 4.30 and six. But unlike India, it was, not just, it was not just swimming, right? You had to manage your studies as well. So one of the, one of the promises I had made to my father was that I will graduate uh, in three years. So I went in 2001, January and the target was to graduate in 2004. So that meant taking additional coursework. So I was taking anywhere between 14 to 18 hours a week of coursework. Uh, that meant managing studies. 
and also work because I wanted pocket money. And I had multiple jobs. Uh, my first job, believe it or, or not, was in the college cafeteria. And the perk of that job was I was um, in the dishwashing section. So I used to work from six in the evening till nine o'clock at night. The advantage of the dishwasher, it was the graveyard shift. So when you left, um, whatever was available in the cafeteria, um, it was free bees. So a lot of times I used to walk uh, back to the dorm. This is gonna sound really funny, but with uh, softy ice creams, and uh, sometimes I would have three or four toppings on that. Um, the swimming methodology was completely different. Um, the coach had a different philosophy than any coaches I'd worked with. Another thing was the infrastructure. So infrastructure wise, our swimming pool was 25 yards, but we had two swimming pools. Um, so we had access to the pools only for us, which was different, um, plus any equipment you wanted. So in India, uh, touch pads, which is the universal standard for, for measuring your timing, um, is only put on for the big meets. So at nationals, at uh, all India university levels. Um, in the US, our college had touch pads. So every Saturday, when we did the practice, we used to put the touch pads on both sides, not even on one. Um, so life in the US um, was hard initially because um, I had a huge culture shock. Um, I moved from Pune, which is um, on a on a cold day, it gets used to it used to get up to about five degrees Celsius. Um, to going to Pennsylvania, where where in the winters we have had uh, temperatures ranging in the below below minus tens, um, which meant I had a three kilometer walk uh, to the swimming pool, and it used to be freezing cold. Plus, there used to be snow on the ground. Um, the food was different. My university only had ten other Indian students. Um, so I was exposed to a lot of things um, and I'm very, very thankful to my parents that they allowed me to do it. Um, I, I give my US education a lot of credit because it built a lot of resiliency um, in me. Um, in, in 2004, after I graduated, uh, I wanted to uh, continue swimming, but it got very, very difficult as um, I had got into a competitive master's program and there was no access to a swimming pool um, beyond, beyond the time when we had classes. And so I started running. I was always a middle distance to a long distance swimmer. So I started running uh, marathons. And in 2006, I ran my first marathon 2007, I ran my second marathon and I landed up moving to Boulder, Colorado. And that's where I met wonderful people who were all talking about Ironman. And they told me, look, Cal, uh, Cal was my, my nickname in the US. Um, they told me, look, you know, you have, the, you, have the, you have the swim, you have the run, the bike is the easy bit. So why don't you do an Ironman, at least do one. And so, I found my why that there was no, no other Indian who had done an Ironman in uh, 2008. And I thought it was a great challenge for me. So that's how I landed up uh, registering for my first Ironman. So I registered in May and the race was going to be uh, in November. At that time, I did not even have a bike. Um, so although my strength was the swim and somewhat of the run, my weakness and obviously a huge unknown uh, was to get to that 180 kilometer bike. Fortunately for me, like I said, I was in Boulder, Colorado, um, which is the Mecca of Ironman or the Mecca of triathlons rather. And I had the chance to mentor with Dave Scott, um, Chrissy Wellington was there, Michael Lovato was there. Um, you name it, some of the top professional athletes each year used to come uh, during their winter times to train in train in Boulder in the summer. And so my, my initial mentors taught me a lot about the program. The biggest unknown for me was nutrition. I had no idea what, what I would eat. And there was a huge learning curve that I got that I was exposed to cliff bars, um, but nobody told me how many am I supposed to eat. And in my first Ironman, 
and I shared this with uh, Nikki Bartlett, who's an, who's an amazing pro athlete, that in my first Ironman bike portion, I had seven cliff bars. I had a cliff bar every single hour. And on the run, I had no idea um, what was special needs, what I should put in there. So if, if you are from Pune and you know Chitale Bakarwadi, I had two of those in my special needs and a Snickers bar. Um, but I was able to finish my first Ironman, and I would say in somewhat somewhat passing colors. Uh, my first Ironman was um, 11 hours and 41 minutes, um, which at that time uh, was, was the fastest for any Indian. Um, I still hold uh, the fastest swim uh, record, which was 47.30. And that set me up to doing more of these races. But a, but a job change uh, took me to Johns Hopkins, which which is uh, one of the best institutions uh, in the US. I worked in uh, Hopkins um, as a clinical exercise physiologist. And uh, while I was at Hopkins, I was also uh, doing higher education, going for an MBA and a PhD program. Um, this is where I really started uh, getting more involved in cardiovascular physiology. Um, plus Hopkins is home to two of the, the top uh, or at least at that time, two of the top professional uh, teams. So uh, the Baltimore Ravens, which have been Super Bowl champions a uh, few times. Um, and their baseball team was pretty good as well. And they have, they have won the MLB title. So you were only uh, exposed to top quality athletes who used to come to Hopkins for, for routine tests, like we were to max test and we, do, we did cardiovascular analysis on them along with, the, with some of the professional athletes. So I really started to um, see how I could better myself with my education and work with them for hands-on experience. Um, at Hopkins, I, I used to use Ironman, and this is gonna sound again funny, as, as a good way to just balance everything because when you're working full-time um, in a high stressful institution, uh, plus you're going to school at night, um, you need an outlet. And Ironman for me uh, gave the perfect opportunity uh, to look forward to something each year, because at that time um, you had to register for an Ironman event a year in advance. It wasn't what it is today. There weren't that many events. So my first, uh, first five years, I did one Ironman each year. And in 2000, uh, 2013 was the first time I decided to do two Ironmans. And I traveled to Australia, uh, did an Ironman in May. And then in September, I had a phenomenal time of 11 hours and three minutes at my first graduate school. So in Wisconsin, uh, that was a home race for me. And that was again, one of the fastest times. When people ask me, you know, what does Ironman give you? Uh, there's a lot of highs and lows that this race gives. Um, and it's very, very similar and comparable um, to our to our life, and so that's why, uh, personally, for me, Ironman has become very very synonymous uh, to my life. Um, in in 2017, I wanted to, as uh, you know, 2016. I mean, I wanted to uh, dip my toes in in a couple other races that were on my bucket list. So I did I did comrades in 2016 uh, May, and I was the the fastest Indian that year. I had the Bill Rowan medal, which is the, I'm the only one in Pune who's done it with a time of eight hours and 47 minutes. And a couple of my friends had talked about the Ultraman event. Um, they had talked uh, that there were three other Indians who were going. And I wanted to just dip my waters and see uh, what, this, what this race is about. And it was a very simple three-day event. Um, it's held in multiple places now, but back then it was held in four different uh, four different countries. Um, each day has a 12 hour cutoff. Um, so the day, first day is a 10 kilometer swim and a 150 kilometer cycle. Uh, the second day is a 272 kilometer cycle. And then the third day is a 84.4 kilometer run. This race is self-supported. Uh, that means you need your own crew to manage it. And it's done on open roads. So it's uh, open to traffic. That's what I mean on open roads. So you have to follow all the traffic laws, which can um, add time, especially on the bike, that you have to wait for the signals to turn green. You cannot. If you, if you move um, on, on red or yellow, you, there's a likelihood 
uh, if the stewards catch you, you may get a six minute penalty. So uh, my wonderful cousin from Iowa, Sampada came and uh, volunteered to help me out. And, and the first day, um, I had thought that the first day would be my strongest day. Obviously the 10 kilometer swim, um, I thought I would have a smashing swim, which I did. Uh, my time was two hours and 49 minutes. It was the fourth fastest uh, swim in Ironman history, oh, sorry, Ultraman history. Um, unfortunately I had wetsuit issues that the water was cold and I'd only taken uh, my half sleeve wetsuit. Um, I, I drank a lot of the water, I drank a lot of water and I wear contacts. So my contacts got very, very itchy. So at one time um, I had to call my crew and get them to bring me a fresh pair of contacts, which was in the car, but they were about 15 minutes away. And then um, I had to send them on another errand uh, to get me um, eye drops. I also had a puncture, which added about seven to eight minutes. Um, so my first day uh, was quite interesting. I was, I was able to finish it um, in eight hours and 59 minutes. My goal was nine hours. I was well in. Uh, the second day was supposed to be my toughest day because I had never biked anything beyond 180, um, which, may, which may sound really funny when you're expected to do, to do 272. Um, but I was confident given my Ironman skills that I just wanted to finish that time, uh, finish the bike ride in the 12 hour cutoff. Um, that day, uh, everything that could go wrong went wrong. My crew, uh, I had a change of crew and two people decided for some reason to sleep in. We tried to get a hold of them. Um, as it is, I was, I was nervous and a little stressed about the 272 kilometers. Um, and then my crew didn't show up. So we had to borrow off uh, a crew member of someone else. Um, that meant there was only two people in the car. So one person to uh, drive and the other one uh, to sort of guide you. Um, having a three person crew is optional, uh, sorry, optimal, but that's, that's what it was. Uh, fortunately for me, I didn't really have too many, too many issues, no punctures, um, no contact issues, and we sailed through. Um, I finished the race, I uh, finished the second day in 11 hours and five minutes. The, the third day was supposed to be my strongest day. I had done uh, multiple back-to-back -back marathons, I had a strong running history, um, but something happened on the, on the third day. Halfway into, halfway into the marathon, I had I'd done my first first marathon in four hours and 20 minutes. My target was uh, between 4.20 and 4.30. And then halfway, um, I had kept a change of shoes at 45 kilometers. And even with a change of shoes, uh, which were one size bigger, um, they were really tight on my feet and I had no idea what was going on. And I literally was, was reduced to walking after, after 60 kilometers. And I had, I was one of the, only moments I had thought that, oh no, uh, this could get dangerously close. And I remember telling my cousin that I really need to, to get back into focus. And I, I remembered um, that I was doing it for my, for my son who was born in, in late 2016 and, and that why kept on going. So when I, when I finished the race, this is what my foot looked, at, uh, looked like. And this is me at the finish line uh, with my good friend Manny and my cousin, um, as you can clearly tell, I was emotional. What had happened is um, somewhere during the run, I had stepped into a pile of fire ants and I'm just very, very fortunate that uh, um, I did not have a, a much worse reaction than what I did. My feet were swollen up, but it could have been uh, a lot worse than it was. Um, that for me was one of the, the most mentally uh, challenging things I've done. And um, I was quite happy and proud of myself to, to finish it. I was also the fastest um, Ultraman amongst Indians that year and up to, it, up to that point. Um, so in 2017, post uh, Ultraman, I also had the opportunity uh, to do Ironman Kona. Um, and I had qualified via the legacy route, which meant uh, you had to have done 12 Ironmans um, to even get there. When I got to Kona, um, that landed up being my 19th Ironman total. So I had to wait some time till my number came up. I have been very, very fortunate that I've had the chance to do Ironman at some very, very wonderful places. Uh, so this is Copenhagen last year in 2019. 
this is Ironman Gurrier, and um, this is Ironman Hamburg. Um, so this race has given me wonderful memories. Uh, I didn't really think that I would do 25 Ironmans, but after I got to got to number 19, which was Kona, I said, who, who wants to stop at number 20? So I thought, okay, let me try and get to 25, push myself and see what happens. A routine uh, question that I get is that, uh, you know, most people want to do Ironman once uh, as a bucket list event. So why, why have you done it uh, that many times? Um, and like I said, Ironman for me uh, is a synonym to life. Um, I have been very, very fortunate that I have uh, trained at the highest level in sport from 1992. I haven't really taken a big break as such. Um, I've had such a strong aerobic foundation uh, that has kept me relatively injury free. Um, I have invested uh, in strength training from a very, very young age. So from uh, you know early 2000s, uh, especially in the US, we played a, played a huge uh, deal uh, about your strength training and your gym work, about your core work. Um, I studied uh, various aspects of sports medicine, um, biomechanics, exercise, physiology. So I started creating my own plans. Um, I knew when I was overstretching, if I was getting close to overtraining. Um, and, and that uh, you know, 12 plus years of coaching experience has made me a better athlete. Um, I may not be able to put in as much time as required, but, but having trainees around um, I can spend just enough time that I know, you know, two months or three months before, before each event, I can, I can get into race specific training and, um, you know, have a good chance of having a great race. Uh, which brings me to a very, very important aspect is that for the first five years of Ironman, I trained in the US and obviously there's, there's some different challenges that we experience in India. Uh, the first challenge is um, access to swimming pools. And I think all of us uh, go through that. Even for me, um, my closest swimming pool is three kilometers away. In peak traffic, that can be anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes. Um, again, there is specific times our pools are open. So let's say between you know 5.30 or 6 in the morning to 11. And then again in the afternoon. And a lot of pools are only open to members or advanced level swimmers. Um, in the in the evenings when most of us finish work and have actually have time to go swim. Um, obviously, uh, there is a dearth of open water options that we face. We can't just wake up and say, you know, I'm going to go swim uh, at the lake or the river uh, or the sea uh, in my in my city, wherever you wherever you are. Um, obviously, there's a lot of risk involved with that. Um, the quality of the water is, is not something we can trust. Uh, but the bigger issue is there's a lack of quality swim coaching. Um, and unfortunately, this is uh, in every, every major city in India. Uh, there's only a few good coaches who will teach you the right technique to swim. Most of our coaches land up teaching you um, life-saving skills. Um, for, the, for the cycle, obviously, it's huge. Um, you know, safety on the roads. Uh, we all know um, unfortunate truth about two-wheeler accidents, four-wheeler accidents. And what we are seeing is that people do not respect us cyclists. Um, the next thing is that the cost of equipment is quite, quite high. Um, you know, if a, a general person wants to do an Ironman, they have to uh, invest in a somewhat decent road bike uh, anywhere between you know, uh, 70 to 80,000 rupees. And um, that's just not it. You need a good helmet, you need cleats, um, you need bike trainers for safety. So we have to quantify uh, between the need and the want. Do you really uh, need um, the top of the top stuff or do you just need the basic stuff that's gonna get you uh, to your goal, whatever that might be. For the run, um, although some cities are much better than others in terms of having synthetic tracks, uh, not everyone is lucky to have uh, tracks. Not everyone is lucky to have uh, hills we can train on. And then obviously uh, we're not lucky to have trails. Um, having trails is good. Uh, the soft surface can keep you, uh, keep you injury free. Um, in terms of equipment, obviously uh, it's changing now. A lot of good companies are now starting to see um, benefit of investing in India. 
So a lot of good equipment is coming into, into town. For example, in 2000, 2008, I had a very, very basic trainer, just a simple one you can, you know, buy probably a decathlon now. And now, um, you know, I can upgrade to a smart trainer. So the for the last five years, I've had a smart trainer, which I bought in India. And it's important to stress in India, because if, if something were to go wrong with a smart trainer that I had got from the US or UK, I would have to ship it back. Whereas in India, the warranty um, also applies. Um, equipment choices, again, we did not have the best of, even the best of tri suits, but a lot of Indian companies have made remarkable progress. And so um, the lack of equipment choices in terms of running shoes, we see a big change in that as well. Um, there's a, an unfortunate trend that uh, running and triathlon coaching now um, is becoming like what it was for personal training. Um, you can do a you know five, six hour course online and then people are becoming coaches. Um, what they unfortunately do not understand, especially with endurance sport, is that uh, you're trusting someone and um, they are putting their life in your hands. Um, a lot of the coaches, again, unfortunately do not have um, any racing experience or relatively very, very less racing experience. When I, when I discuss the, the current and the future of triathlon in India, the way I see it, um, I would like more local races to spring up. Obviously there's there's been a change. There's about six or eight triathlons, uh, even in smaller cities like Kolapur that have come up and are doing exceptionally well. I would like to see quality uh, training camps, especially now that Ironman has made um, its way into India since yeah, last year. Um, I would like to see quality training camps that athletes can come and attend. Um, I would like to see other brands now, especially it will be interesting to see how the professional triathlons uh, organization PTO comes on board, uh, will challenge come to India. But the bigger change I would like to see um, is how can we develop amateurs into professionals? And, and I think for me personally, that's one way I want to contribute to the sport. Um, when I was swimming, uh, we set uh, bigger dreams, bigger targets for the younger generation uh, who worked twice as hard than we did. And, and we are seeing phenomenal results. So if you have to put India on the triathlon map, uh, that is what needs to happen as well. A um, couple last points I will make is that, um, unfortunately, for a lot of people, uh, especially amateurs, they do races um, as bucket lists. They do races because there's constant pressure uh, from their friends. There's social media pressure uh, that we go through. We, need, we see our neighbor or a friend doing an event, and we also want to run that marathon. Um, then you start adding constant pressure about timings. And that comes from peers as well, that if you're not doing a sub two, hey, you need to, you know, you need to work hard. So we are starting to not enjoy the process or enjoy um, running or triathlon or any sport as a means to stay fit. So we see a lot of athletes burn out. Um, and obviously social media um, has somewhat, uh, caused a lot of distress in our life. It's added a lot of stress that we see someone uh, doing X, Y, and Z, and we want to match it um, while not understanding that our situation might be completely different than theirs. Um, so what are the takeaways from this talk that I want you, uh, want you to go home with? Uh, number one is Ironman. There's, Ironman is a big goal. It's a great goal for anyone who wants to achieve it, but understand that you have to start small. We all started somewhere started a sprint triathlon or an Olympic triathlon, build to a half Ironman and then go for your full. Uh, remember that the finish line uh, is still going to be there. And this year has been a great um, example of that, that it's okay to take your time and prepare well so that you give yourself the maximum chance of finishing. For the swim, um, understand this is going to be the weakest for a lot of athletes. So uh, focus time on quality swim sessions in the pool Invest time in learning the proper technique and obviously go ahead of time to any triathlon event and practice, practice, practice open water. That's going to give you a lot of success on race day. On the bike, it is all about the bike. Yeah, the, the bike is the biggest component of an Ironman or a triathlon. Spend as much time um, as you can on the bike. Don't skip out on the bike workouts. It's okay to miss out uh, on a run workout, but I would highly say 
invest in your bike fitness. And last but not least, on the run, um, if your goal is Ironman, keep it as your primary goal. I've seen, I've seen athletes make too many mistakes that they want to do an Ironman, but while training for it, they also want to run a sub four hour marathon or qualify for Boston or have some other running goal. So if Ironman is your goal, invest time, energy, be disciplined, and do what it takes to see the finish line um, that year or that race. Keep all the other goals on the side and life will be great. With that, um, I, will, I will stop and I will answer any questions that you may have. Wow, that was amazing, uh, Kausup. Uh, thanks for walking us through your uh, journey from becoming a star in 1995 to staying a star until 2020. So that means uh, you were holding more than one national record at a certain time, right? Like the one you made back in 1990s and uh, the one where you uh, finished uh, Ironman races in six continents, the first Asian to finish uh, Ironman races in all six continents. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think uh, when I swam, you had the opportunity to do multiple events. Uh, we could do up to five events plus three relays. And so at any given time at nationals, I at least had um, a couple gold medals. Um, like I said, uh, at uh, the junior nationals, I've done three gold medals uh, in one year. And at All India University, I, I had the record for the 50, the 100, the 200, the 400, and the 1500. So five gold medals. Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, we can take, uh, we can start the Q&A. Uh, before we take the audience questions, I'd like to ask one myself. Yeah. Uh, what percentage of your trainees, like when they first approach you for Ironman coaching, how many of them know swimming, <coughs> uh, you know, swimming before they approach you? And how long do they take to learn swimming? I know, I know it takes a different amount of time for every person, but say on an average four weeks or six weeks, and I'm asking this specifically for endurance athletes. I mean, those who have already been into distance running or cycling. Yeah. You now I see so many of my running friends here who are very good runners, like extremely good runners and also cyclists, yeah. but they shy away from triathlons only because they do not know swimming or they're not so good at it. So how do you see that? Um, I would say 50% uh, of the people who uh, come to me for the initial consult, um, either know very, very basic swimming or don't know swimming. And the first thing um, I tell them is invest maybe three months. So oh. take, uh, take 12 weeks um, minimum and invest time with a coach who's gonna be hands-on, who's gonna be on top of you at the deck. Um, because the one thing with swimming is that it's very technique oriented. And if you learn something wrong, it takes a lot of time to unlearn that and relearn that. So it's better yeah. that someone uh, just comes on board with me as just for a running or a cycling plan. And then once their swimming is, is on par to where we need to go, uh, we can start the triathlon training plan. Okay, great, thank you. We have one question from uh, Raman Pushkar. We hear people saying, don't do extreme sports. It might lead to injury or other challenges. What's your thought on this? Um. Uh, you know, it, I would like to say that uh, you have to be smart about it. Like I said, you have to know where you stand. Um, you have to build a strong foundation. Um, a lot of mistakes that happen are that people get so involved um, in either endurance running or endurance biking or going straight for Ironmans that they forget the basic things, which is investing time in a good warm up and a good cool down. Um, foam rolling after and stretching after each session. Um, and that's, again, investing time in strength training. And number one, and the most important is nutrition. If you are able to manage all of that, uh, you're not adding a lot of burden on your body. And that is one of the, one of the key lessons that I have learned um, is that the supplementary things uh, to your training, if you do them well, there's a big chance that you will stay injury free. Okay, and a good coach. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we have uh, Damodar Naidu asking, what was your age when you have uh, become Ironman for the first time? 
Um, I was 26, so in 2000, 2008, when I did Ironman Arizona. Okay. And we have a question from uh, Srinivas. This is how do you quickly adapt to vertical position in bike? Like, like having been in a horizontal position in your swim, how do you just go boom, a vertical position? Because he says, you know, the first 30 seconds or a minute, it takes time. Uh, you know, he's dizzy or lightheaded. Yeah. So do you um, uh, practice that or is there any special drills specifically to that, it? That's a great question. Um, especially for someone like me who has vertical. Um, so I have the same challenges that uh, Srinivas, you may have. Um, like you said, Nilima, it's practice. And unfortunately, a lot of the triathletes I know will do a brick session, which is you do one workout after the another. Yeah. And a lot of triathletes focus on the other brick, which is equally important, the bike to the run, because that's a bigger transition, right? Um, mm -hmm. Not many people, for whatever reason, uh, practice the first brick, which is even more important because you're going from vertical to horizontal. And so for a lot of times, um, for my trainees, especially, I'll tell them, take your bike to the pool, do your swim workout and just come out quickly as if you're doing a transition. And that's the only way you will, you will realize what you have to do. And for me, um, I can't just rush out of the water anymore. I have to be careful. Uh, the first 15 to 15 to 20 seconds, I walk. And once I know I've got my bearing, everything is, is good to go, I start running. So that's okay. something you may, you may want to practice when you start slow. And then hopefully over a period of time, the more you do, the better you will get. Okay, thank you. Um, from Rakesh, we have this question. Is it possible to get trained for Boston and Ironman together? Since for Boston, we should work on speed, whereas for Ironman, we should work on endurance. So um, I discussed this in one of the slides that um, have one goal. If Boston is your goal, uh, do specific marathon training and use um, triathlon training as complementary. So your cross training is then swimming and cycling. And once you achieve that goal, come on to Ironman because more than likely, uh, like you've rightly identified Rakesh, it's two completely different segments. Yeah. And if you, if you train for Ironman with a running focus, you're going to skip out on the bike and the swim, and that's going to give you other issues. Yeah. So um, have one goal, achieve that goal, and then move on to the next one. Yeah, especially with Ironman, the bike being the longest leg. Yeah. You need to focus on the bike as well. Yeah, and understand a lot of your runs are to be done on tired legs after the bike, and that's, that's a yeah. very big transition you have to go through. Hmm. I, uh, I just have uh, one for, my, from, for you. I mean, when you transit from uh, bike to run, are the first two kilometers the fastest? First few kilometers? Um, they can be. Um, and that's where you really have to sort of control yourself. And there's a lot of excitement. I think for a lot of people, uh, me included, I'm the happiest when the bike is done because I know once I'm off yeah. the bike, I can finish any race in the world. Um, and so you, in that excitement, plus there's a lot of noise. Um, for a lot of people, run is their strongest discipline or the biggest time they have invested before they started triathlons. Mm -hmm. um, so in that matter of hurry, uh, you land up running the first couple of kilometers a little fast and then reality strikes. So it's important to start <laughs> slow and then gradually build. Okay, because I always felt that I don't feel my legs after uh, I come off the bike. You know, I don't realize I'm going fast. So does it happen? Yeah. Yeah, it happens to it happens to a lot of us. We don't really realize um, because uh, if you're doing the bike the right way, you have a good bike fit. Uh, you have conserved a lot of your running muscles, um, nope. so you're sore from the bike, but then your huh. running muscles are all ready and ready to fire. Okay, okay, great. Uh, we have a question from Niranjan. How much time we have to invest to participate in Ironman? Um. It, you know, there's no like a set answer. I would say if you're proficient in all three, so you know, um, 500 meters of swimming nonstop. Um, you have ridden at least 30 to 40 kilometers um, on a bike at a decent, decent average speed. And then obviously yeah. you've run at least a few half marathons, if not a full marathon, um, you can get to an Ironman in nine to 12 months. Obviously, oh. um, if you have couple strengths, uh, like you've done multiple marathons, and your swimming is somewhat good, or you're a really good biker and you have done a couple half marathons, that time frame can be shortened. But give yourself, um, I would say as a first timer, give yourself 
close to six to nine months because life comes in the way. And you oh. got a budget rest, you got a budget recovery, you got a budget travel, you got a budget uh, illness, um, so many different things that uh, you know we take for granted and then something comes in the way. Okay. Uh, lockdown and swimming pools. Okay, this has been a question on our mind for the last four to five months. How do you practice swim during lockdown? Well, unfortunately, the answer is very simple. You cannot. Um, <laughs> Unless, yeah. unless you're fortunate and have a swimming pool in your backyard, I don't. Um, so this is the longest I have not swum. It's been, uh, I think, 7th of, 7th of March was the last time I swam in Ironman New Zealand. Um, okay. What you can do is uh, just YouTube uh, swimming drills, swimming dry land drills. Um, okay. So either with stretch cords or therabands uh, so that your muscle memory is still there. And when the, when the pool opens up, yeah, you can get back in somewhat of a better better shape. But the good thing is that you'll have a lot more strength than you, than you just had while doing swimming. Yeah, okay. We have Ashish asking, how tough was doing the Ironman event when you were down with fever? Um, I think he's talking about the dengue story in 2014. I don't know, that's so, all he says. Yeah, so this, probably uh, this is what... One of my uh, you know, claims to fame is to do an, an Ironman with dengue. Um, it was tough. Uh, again, um, I was in touch with my physician. We were keeping uh, track of our labs. Uh, but it wasn't uh, you know, burning fever. It was, it was something we could manage. Uh, it's tough because I had to really focus on uh, staying hydrated during, during the entire day. Um, plus, it made things challenging. Like I said, I have vertigo. Uh, so fever and vertigo meant that I was getting dizzy much more. Um, but other than that, there was not, not much difference because physically um, I was ready and mentally I was much stronger. Okay. We have Sundar asking, how would you encourage or inspire an amateur marathoner or biker or swimmer to step outside their comfort zone and stretch towards an Ironman? How is the mindset different? Um, you know, the mindset is something you have to create for yourself. Um, I, I'm sure, Sundar, when you, when you started, you probably started with two kilometers or five kilometers, and then you moved to, you know, 10, 21, 42, or even, even an ultra marathon. And that's why uh, even with, uh, with Ironman, like I said, start small, um, take the baby steps, do a sprint triathlon, do it just for fun, go to the pool, do a swim, come out, do a bike, and you can do it. Um, by yourself, you don't really need to register for a race. See if you like it. Um, and chances are, if you like something, you are going to uh, push yourself much more. Yeah. Um, and then uh, at some point, you will realize that a sprint or an Olympic is not enough. And then you'll take the next step. Okay. Thank you. And uh, we have Shiva asking, out of 20 man, 25 Ironman finishes, which is the most toughest? And what are the specific challenges to this event? Um, so the two toughest are Kona. Obviously, it's known to be uh, tough because the, the swim itself starts tough. The sea can be pretty rough. Uh, the bike is quite challenging um, in all aspects. It's a very hilly course, especially the back end. So the coming back into town 90 kilometers is much, much more challenging. Uh, it gets ridiculously hot. So temperatures can go um, as high as 45, 46, plus with the heat index, it may feel in the mid fifties. Um, there's headwinds and crosswinds that you experience on the bike. And you think that you get off the bike and the sun's going to go down and it's going to cool off and it never happens in Kona. Um, yep. something, something similar to that uh, happens in Brazil as well. Um, and Brazil, again, being very tropical, um, it's, a, it's a unique experience. So in my, in my view, those, those two are the toughest races I have done. Okay. Oh, we have uh, Hemant asking, we understand that Ironman race requires huge, huge mental toughness and also staying calm. How do you manage to stay calm throughout? Does meditation help or anything else that helps you to focus on the moment? Yeah, a key to, key to any race and, and as Ryan Hall has put it so beautifully in his word is that you have to run the mile you're in. Um, similar to that in an Ironman, um, you have to stay in the moment when you swim. You can't be thinking of the bike. 
uh, for someone like me, even if I have a good swim or a bad swim, it doesn't matter. I still have to do the 180 kilometers on the bike. And you may be having a really good day on the bike or a really bad day on the bike. You still have to run the 42 kilometers. So you have to uh, stay in the moment. Um, if you start going too fast, uh, chances are you, you will miss on key hydration, key nutrition. And if you start um, getting negative, um, then you know it will give you mental setbacks in different ways. Uh, there's a couple of techniques that uh, I use. One is meditation. Um, and even if it's for five or eight minutes uh, at the end of the day, uh, it's a great tool to have to stay in the moment. And then I use positive self-talk a lot um, that during each and every of my training sessions, I'm saying only positive things to me. Uh, mm -hmm. Once in a while, I may blur out something uh, other people don't want to hear. But mm -hmm. for the most part, if you, um, it's all in between your two years. If you are positive in there, uh, you can climb out of any situation in life. So did you have any DNFs? I had one uh, in 2015 and I crashed the bike in Ironman Malaysia. Again, I was not, I was not in the moment. Um, I, I hit, a, hit a stone coming down a big hill. Um, I was probably clocking 45 to 48 kilometers per hour. And I hit a big stone and I just went down on my right side. This happened within the first 20 kilometers. I broke my wrist. Uh, I had a couple, uh, I wouldn't say fracture, but a gashes on my ribs. But the most uh, impact was my bike uh, almost broke. The derailleur broke. And uh, I had to wait for the mechanics. They came and they put me on a single speed. And I, I kept on fighting till uh, 90 kilometers. I had five hours to do the, to the, to the, to the remaining 90. But okay. um, I could not even, uh, you know, press the brake. And, and I, you know, I smartly uh, for once, I just said, you know what? Uh, it's okay to have a DNF today. Go no. back and live to fight another day. Yeah. yeah. You're a hero. You know, <laughs> you decide to say it's okay, right? It's okay not to finish. Yeah, and, you know, a lot of the professionals will go through it. All amateurs athletes will go through it at some point. So you just, if you're having a really bad day, um, it doesn't make sense to to put your life in risk. So what what actually happened? Why did you hit it? Were you not focusing, or were you thinking something else? What was going on? Um, I think I was for that minute second. I looked at my watch and I saw a number I had not seen in a while, okay. and um, it was just bad luck. Um, I can't place why there was a stone at at that place. And on a road bike at that speed, even a small stone, yeah. um, as I found out, can be the difference. And that's what it was. And any other day, um, I would have hit the stone and just kept on rolling. But for whatever whatever reason, that day, it happened. Okay. Uh, we have a question from Murli. Is it good to train for half an at the age of 46? Um, Murli, as long as you go through a health checkup and your doctor has given you uh, the clearance, I would say, why not? I mean, I have, I have two trainees who are 62 years old, and they just did Ironman New Zealand with me. And if you see the see the news, I think just yesterday or day before it came that uh, there was an 83 year old Japanese guy who finished Ironman Kona and he's got the Guinness Book of World Records. So if you're healthy, um, you have time, um, and you have the will to train, then by all means go for it. Uh, why not? What's stopping you? <laughs> sure. Uh, we have another question from Suman. How do you deal with injuries? How, how to deal with roadblocks when you don't have a coach? How do you plan for injury rehabilitation? Um, so like I said, I've been quite fortunate. Uh, I have not had any serious injury. I've had uh, a shoulder surgery because of my swimming uh, miles. That was in 2009. Um, I've, had made, I've made mistakes which caused basic running injuries like you know runner's knee, uh, plantar fasciitis, but we caught it at the right moment. And that's when I realized that, you know, I'm one, I'm getting older. And two, uh, it's even more important now that I invest in a proper warm up, a proper cool down, a stretching session, strength training. So even now, um, I'm okay to let go of the main set, but I will never miss a warm up or a cool down. I am okay uh, to cut back on my main set, but do a proper stretch routine. If my body is not willing, I'm okay to take the day off. And that's, that's a point I want to stress that if your body is giving you signs, 
just take the day off or two days off and you know you're not going to lose fitness but if you keep on going one you may get injured or two you may get ill um so that is that is what i've learned with so many years of experience that i can now follow it properly um roadblocks uh while not having a coach um i would say that at least have a mentor uh who you can talk to um or someone who you respect in in whatever field you are it may be uh, triathlons or running or cycling uh, or swimming at the for the matter of that that who can guide you in terms you feel that yeah, you know you just need to um have a quick chat there should yeah. be someone who should tell you that look boss i think you should do x and not do y so you yeah. don't necessarily need a coach but you need someone uh, who can guide you if need be yeah okay great we have jitendra asking i'm 46 and i have run full marathons i've cycled up to 390 kilometers i have to learn swimming now and i want to finish an ironman how should how should be my focus going forward um it it seems that uh, jitendra you have a strong running and and cycling background so i would say when the pools open up um and i really hope they open up in the next two months um invest a good four to six months in swimming and uh, if you can work on that get the technique right then within 9 to 12 months you should be able to finish a full ironman um you have the you have the run background you have the cycle background add the swim and we put them all together and you'll be fine yeah i mean for uh, really strong runners and cyclists swimming should be a problem because that being the shortest leg in the triathlon right in the ironman triathlon that's a shortest it, leg 3.8 km yeah. swim So it it should not be a problem but uh, you have to be very patient with swimming yeah um, definitely with with running and I, i'll use this analogy is that with with running you can move from a 5k to a 10k in a couple of weeks yeah. with cycling you can move from 20 to 50 in a couple of weeks from sw- for swimming to move from 200 meters to <laughs> 500 meters be very patient it takes much longer Yeah. So don't compare your swim times <laughs> and your swim endurance with your run and cycle endurance. It's not. It's not. I'm just saying yeah. it's short so that shouldn't uh, you know hold them back. That's all I'm trying. It it should not at all, you know, and and anyone can learn learn how to swim. Like I said my 262 year old uh, trainees who did Ironman started swimming at the age 58. So you have at least 12 years ahead of you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So we probably can take in one or two more questions. Uh, when people approach you with the goal of finishing an ironman race is there a criteria that you expect them to meet um like i said uh, you know uh, to be fair to my trainees you should know basic swimming um you should have ridden uh, a bike and it can be any bike it can be a hybrid bike or a mountain bike um at least 20 kilometers or so and you should you should be able to uh, run 5 kilometers non stop um if you can do all three um i will bring you on board right away as a trainee okay okay a uh, one last question from raman pushkar um uh, says how do you manage to become independent entrepreneur coach and athlete given family and office commitments how do you manage um again i was i was one of the very fortunate people uh that i could convert uh, my passion into my profession uh right now the past 4 months uh, have been tough uh, but i have had such a big big base of trainees that i'm able to sustain uh, it's it's very difficult to just randomly let go uh, of a job um but i had to make a decision personally because my clinic was picking up and coaching was picking up and so for me coaching being my passion i decided to go that route um in terms of commitment uh with family you have to bring them on board uh and fortunately my mother father and my my wife and son obviously understand that you know iron man takes a lot of time uh but then on the weekends uh you know i only spend time with my son especially and my parents um i have you know and that's one thing i have uh, realized over a period of time that you have to give them time as well and my son is at an age where he's is going to be 4 and these are the moments i have to spend time with him as well so set yourself a good routine um if you're if you're wanting to become a coach 
um, I would say um, understand that uh, it's going, it's not an easy journey, right? So when I started, I only had one training, and from one to get to fifty uh, took me a lot of years, and then from fifty to get to uh, where I am right now, it's taken me at least five years. So if you're going to quit your job or or look up uh, coaching as a secondary career, understand all the risks, and then and sit down and and list all of those with your family and then take a wise decision for yourself i think he was more asking how you were able to manage being all of this uh... well you know uh, like i said uh, things fell in place yeah. for me um yeah. you know and i i had i again i had to realize that i cannot be the master of all all trades something had to let go otherwise i would not be a decent uh, clinician i would be a horrible coach and i would be a horrible par- uh, family person so something had to let go and for me consciously it was the clinic that i had to let go yeah it's really important that family understands this too family plays a crucial role and my family backed me up they said if look if you want to be a coach then we have your whole support yeah that's great thank you kausub it's uh, been a great q and a session we got quite a few questions answered and uh, i'm sure you inspired uh, many today and i hope at least some of them will uh, experience the bliss of triathlons very soon Yeah, I hope so too. I hope uh, you know our roads are back to us, and the swimming pools are given back to us pretty soon. Oh yeah! Uh, thanks again. I'm passing it on to Revati, uh, one of uh, active members in Hyderabad Runners, for a formal word of thanks. Over to you, Revati. Thanks all. Uh, thank you, Nilima, for the Q and A facilitation, and uh, thanks, Doc, for uh, your insights and very very candid sharing. i think it's very easy to share uh, you know the achievements and the accomplishments that you've had but at the same time you also spoke about the challenges and uh, you know where you were not able to achieve what you wanted and how you overcame that and that i think is going to be a great takeaway uh, thanks a lot for all of these inputs and for your time and for your valuable time uh, to our audience thank you for choosing to be with us today uh we know that there are a lot of other options and so thanks for spending your time with us uh for those of you who missed this event or if you would like to watch it again and then get re-inspired uh we'll be uploading this uh video onto the AHM YouTube channel as well as it will be available at the Facebook page of Hyderabad Runners feel free to come back watch again and to share to others that would probably be inspired to do an ironman any queries questions you have please feel free to keep commenting in the comment section and we'll try to get them answered as much as possible before we wind up just a quick caution that there are cases increasing day by day and so please take precautions and stay healthy and stay safe we'll be back next saturday with yet another inspiring talk and uh, just like you pro- focused on sunday and sun every sunday for our runs in the morning we'd love for you to block your saturday evening 7:30 pm ist for our beyond the track webinars and we'd love to see you again every week right over here until then this is revati from hyderabad runners signing off stay safe and stay healthy thank you